Hell world is a lot more fun when everything goes perfectly. So continuing our perfect start series, this ladies and gents is part two. You guys asked for it. So here it is. I tried to condense even more information this time around. And of course, I also got super lucky with a bunch of drops, but I'm going to show you a ton of cool stuff. So super excited about this one. So the first thing I want to immediately jump into is leveling past 20. That's why I'm going to grab all of these spheres and all of these arrows left behind by the Vixies. And this is going to kind of let us jump to the next stage of our base, which is going to be all about breeding. We want some of the best top tier pals as early as possible, like Anubis, Phalaris, even Fanglopes, and quite a few more others that will just help a ton with the resource extraction, creation, and also with the mount speed. These are like our three concerns at this stage. So in the starting area, what I'm doing right now is essentially farming everything and get all of their XP bonuses to 10 out of 10, completely exhaust them and just push through that leveling as fast as I can. Plus, this can also give you a bunch of very cool pals to have, like the Elks can definitely work very well early in the party. You also have the Nightwing, which you can then turn into a flying mount in just a bit. However, I will completely skip over that mount as I do have a much better solution. Also, I gotta say that the Vixie's farm remained useful all the way to level 49. Even if you only use the regular spheres, you will want to still level up by capturing that 10 out of 10 of each individual low level pal. Very easy, scales up with your level and you can also upgrade your Vixies at a condenser to rank 3 and have them also drop those mega spheres instead and give you even better chances to capture the low level stuff. But from this point on, back at the base, I do want to complete three things right now ASAP. A, I want to get my character stronger, so we need a bunch of starting armor, and especially, we do need that three-shot bow, which is going to help a ton, and it's absolutely amazing at this stage. Which is then going to let us achieve the second thing, and that is fighting a couple of early bosses, specifically Panking and Bushi, to eventually get Anubis, and third of all, by just doing all of this, we also get to level up our base and further increase our workforce as we do want to properly set everything up, get everything going super fast and smooth and constantly have resources to craft the next batch of things or upgrades that we need for the next level. Now, my Fox Park is kind of struggling a bit with kindling these ingots. It's not a problem. We're going to get a Phalaris in a few more levels. And that's going to absolutely be the best all the way to like level 40, 45 plus. As it's the best option for your Muntide Ignis. There's nothing better than it. It comes with rank 3 into kindling. It's going to help us with the cakes as well. Plus, we can get a very early on formula to breed one with just the Anubis that we're going to get anyway. So let me just get these nails going. I'm going to put my, well, I already put my Depresso actually doing this. I captured some of these Depressos during night time because, uh, yeah, they tend to spawn a lot in this area. But essentially what we need to do right now is to craft this advanced workbench as we're going to have to craft a bunch of stuff in just a little bit. And specifically, I want the three shot bow. Now, the reason this is so good is because it only consumes one ammo but it shoots three arrows at the same time. So in theory and actually in practice, it deals three times as much damage as a regular bow. That's why you should absolutely go and try to get it. Now, I could also go ahead and craft one of these saddles for the night wings I just caught, but I kind of don't want to waste my time with that. It's quite a bunch of resources and I'm going to jump into the van worm in a bit and then fanglope really soon after. So no reason for me to do so. I'm also going to try to get a bit better armor. Pelt armor is inexpensive and we kind of do want to push the Panking fight a little bit sooner. So um, you can totally skip this and maybe go for a metal armor, which will last you even more levels. But for now, I'm just going to go for this. Maybe even get a bunch of other stuff going, like we do need a bunch of arrows for the fights ahead. And since we do want to push levels for our base and increase the workforce, I'm going to place down that uh, medicine workbench right away. So now that this is done, we can definitely go ahead and craft some of the medical supplies. However, just to show you why I'm never doing that, at least at this stage, it's because it just takes an eternity with the starting bells. And it's not worth it because you can literally buy all of these three quite inexpensively from the abandoned settlement. There's no reason to do any of that. Instead, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just rank up my base. Now we can even create a second one since we're level 9 or well, we can in the next level. 
but uh, it did increase our workforce so uh, luckily we can go ahead and maybe place um i'm not sure my tansy they are pretty good at just handling the base early on now from this point on what i've done is i again went ahead and spent the next day and the night farming as much as i could all of the missing pals that still had a 10 out of 10 xp bonus in the area so even Chilet was one of them and I captured him, plus all the other lift monks and Tenzis and Tifans and even some of these salaries, you can totally use them as an early on glider. They are a very good alternative until you get Gale Claw or maybe some hang use. They can definitely be helpful. So here's where uh, we kind of went and done all of that while the base was kind of doing everything on auto mode. So we got a bunch of resources ready for those final stages. Now, during this process, I also got lucky with a couple of spawns, like we got a Dinosum, which is an amazing early on option. Um, there are some starting bosses that really get a ton of damage from this guy because it's also a dragon type, so it helps with that. Um, I also got a bunch of other Vixies to level up the ones existing in my base, and even some of these electric creatures. I will show you in a bit why this is useful, but definitely catch these, as well as the Lift Monks, for the fanglobe, you're gonna be able to basically breed the fanglobe out of this and a panking, as I'm gonna show you in a bit, and I got an absolutely insane one out of it. Now, before I move on to the actual panking fight, I do still need one component, which is going to be the van worm. Well, we do want that as a flying mount, but it's also pretty amazing. Its damage is going to be really great. You don't have to use arrows on its back, and you can capture creatures from above, which is nice. So technically, it should be somewhere around here where we can find them. So there's going to be a waypoint, which is why I'm going to just make my way over there. Now, this trip took a little bit of while to reach. There are two waypoints here that you can use. And in this case, I did not want to like get any dark halls. I just used that board that I already had and just used its charge attack to cover distance even faster. And eventually, I made it right here at the waypoint. And there are also Maturinas in the area. So luckily, we do need those. For the cakes ahead that's why i went ahead and captured a few and eventually one of these van worms also made their way and i had to fight the van worm too now van worms can be quite difficult but the chill it if you capture it already will make quick work of it and i was lucky enough to get this on i believe the second or the third try you did not uh, need to like use too many spheres to catch it so now that this is over with, I'm gonna go back to the base and yeah, this is going to let us pretty much get the stuff that I need. Now the Van Worm Saddle is uh, just level 21, so luckily we just hit level 21. It only needs a bit more fiber, so I could go ahead and just like take down some of the trees nearby. However, I'm just gonna use the Crusher instead and uh, basically get the Pangolite to um, yeah destroy some of the wood and turn it into fiber. So the starting team right now that I'm preparing for Pangulet is the Elk, Van Worm, Chillet, Dinosum, and I'm probably going to put... Um, yeah, I got a Fu Arc that came with the Shiny effects and... Well, the Lucky effect, actually, and its ability was Dark Laser, which is absolutely crazy. So another tip maybe for you, if you didn't check your Lucky Pals early on, is to definitely do so, because they also spawn with an extra ability compared to others, and usually that ability is one of those high-end alpha boss abilities like in this case this will definitely help a ton plus Fu arcs have an amazing attack when you combine it with your own attack so i'm going to show that to you in just a bit in the meantime i also want to set up my base in preparation for the anubises we're gonna try to craft so i'm gonna get a cooler going and i'm also gonna place down one of these right here we do need the pal spears in just a bit and as you will see, we do get to craft a ton of Gigaspheres. This is going to be the next stage for the um, following bosses. I don't want to spend too much time with the regular ones. So um, yeah, I did get a ton of wood from the area. I did get a lot of stone, which I then turned into Paldium Fragments. So now we have a ton of these plus the ingots. So we can uh, pretty much craft anything in a bit. Um, I also want to get ready for the farm ahead, so leveling up the base now lets us go exactly to the stage we want. So we do want the cooking pot, we do want the wheat plantation and the mill in a bit, which is going to easily give us the next level. Now for the wheat plantation, we do need that wheat seed. However, I'm not going to waste time farming for um, all the pals that can drop it. I'm just going to go right here to this small settlement and I'm gonna just buy the seeds right from this NPC. That's it. That's all you have to do. 
So now that we're back, I can just place it down. And I'm going to also put the food one back. Plus, I believe I need to, uh, yeah, I need to unlock that cooking pot. So I'm just going to place it right around here, which is going to be enough. We also need the mill, of course, for all of that flour we're going to be creating. And luckily, Pen King will arrive just in time. But eventually, we will switch to Azurobe as that's in level 3 into watering. And it's much, much better and faster. But this means I can now just bump my uh, base to 11, which uh, now seems to require a weapons workbench. So that's exactly what I was planning to build anyway. So that's going to be another easy level. So now this is done, I think that uh, we can go ahead and start crafting a bunch of stuff. Like I do need this uh, shield, I didn't get to craft the mega variant. But this is pretty much it, so I can go ahead and now level up my base to the final level. Well, in this case, just level 12. Around the same time is also when I started redesigning my entire base. I started removing all of the wooden elements, at least for some of the main buildings, like the castle, and just placed down a ton of stone. We had a lot of it, as we did have a stone mine before this, and I constantly went back to switch from it and put it down again so that my NPCs actually stay on the ore and not waste their time on the mining pit but um, otherwise this is what i've been doing easily to replace once you place them down like i said in the previous video that that wooden structure was just outlined we did not actually plan to use it at all as it's very flimsy and easily destroyable and this is the end result right here we essentially have these two towers that i really like kind of like watch towers nearby the bridge connected to them then we have that castle over there on the hill overlooking everything very well protected but it's not like anybody even makes their way here in the end we're gonna replace a lot more with stone but for now i think that this is going to be enough anyway i just got that grappling gun going i do recommend getting this as one of the first technology upgrades on the right side when you can as this is going to make movement way way better for you plus transportation of uh, well much higher weight goods so now that this is done, we're going to head over right around here. This is where I'm expecting that, uh, well, Panking boss to be. This is like the general area. So going over there, yeah, this is going to be its platform. However, there's also a waypoint nearby. We're going to use that in case we get to die. I, I don't really want to, like, risk it or anything. So my best solution and my best, of course, tip for you here, if you're struggling with the Panking fight, is to first try to get the pangulets nearby and just like stay on the outskirts, usually the boss will not attack you, as long as it doesn't really get into the line of sight with you. So this is going to give the possibility to either capture or destroy those other pangulets and then jump onto the main fight, like you just saw Pan King saw us and of course um, got to attack us. And this is where our Fu arc comes into play, of course, um, that attack that it has is a slide similar to Pan King's, and it's actually pretty good, but it can also do one of these like Kamehameha waves on it, which is not too shabby. Now, I did use the Dinosum. I said this before, but Dinosum was actually a very good option here for this fight. He does deal a ton of damage and he can also constrict his movement, or at least restrict the movement of the Pan King. So now from this point on, we, uh, we do have a Mega Sphere randomly. Let's see if this works. If not, I do have 100. Okay, it didn't work. So yeah, it was a good call to actually come with the Giga Spheres. It's, um, it's going to be a much better option. Trust me, you're going to want to start crafting them right away, even though they might be a bit more expensive. You're going to use them in the best possible boss locations, so you're not going to waste them too much. Um, unfortunately, Pan King did not have any proper stats, but it's not a big deal. We're going to just want to push for Anubis for his actual abilities and then worry about having like a best in slot Anubis. So going back at the base, I think that um, everything is up and ready. The next bit that I need from this point on, well, we're going to pay attention to the banking, but he's going to be pretty good in the base for now to manage stuff. He can um, just be useful for the plantations. So I'm going to replace some of the um, other water creatures with him. And from this point on, I'm just going to get ready for the next stage of my base. I do want to still push levels with the base. So uh, obviously we do need to craft some fluffy pal beds in the meantime 
Now, I do need to have the Bushy fight ASAP, but I do need a few more levels too. So, um, to make this easier, I'm going to try to get some extra stats as much as possible, basically. So, the Rush Boar and the Lamb Ball meet will help a ton. There are two very easy meals. These ones right here at the bottom. You only need some extra berries and a bit of eggs. Um, one for one, one for the other. So, this is going to give you 10% extra to damage as well as defenses. And you can also give it to your pals and make them um, a lot better. So luckily, you can find all of these resources very close to this base anyway, all around the green starting area, as well as that red forest. So filled with mushrooms, berries, all that rush boar meat and all the lamb balls, very easily findable in this location. Plus, just in case I'm going to try to get some extra gigaspheres, I don't want to risk it and Bushy is notoriously annoying. Now, what I ended up doing from this point on is just set up the base a bit better. I wanted to have breeding as soon as Bushy was available. So I placed down that breeding pan right away on the platform and then also repositioned some of the farms over there so that um, yeah, things don't fall out of it. It kind of caused a few pathing issues. And from this point on, yeah, we already kind of have the resources we need. We have the eggs, we have the wheat, we have the milk, the berries. We only need the honey. So what I'm going to do right now is that I know right next to the Pen King fight, there's an island not too far away, like pretty much a bit north from the Catrice. So we can use that and get in an area with a ton of bee guards. Now, this area might be a little bit annoying because there are many gory rats here and other high level enemies. But um, I suggest pushing through with your van worm up until the first checkpoint because right around it, you're going to find a bunch of bee guards constantly spawning. And guess what? Van worm is actually amazing in this location. He's fire and so he's naturally just like better against these um, nature type elements. So he can just deal extra damage against the bee guards. So making quick work out of them, throwing one of these balls. By the way, found a ton of them in the area. You can easily find Mega Spheres on your way here. But um, yeah, this, this actually gave us a couple of these bee guards, which is not too bad. This is the waypoint, by the way, is the Mosanda Forest up north. And yeah, you're gonna have to travel a little bit, but it's totally worth it. Plus, you can find all of those um, other spheres, the green ones, on the way there to help you a bit against the bee guards. So that you don't have to waste the gigas. Now, from this point on, I think we can actually sacrifice a bunch of these stands. I'm going to sacrifice everybody, actually, and put the bee guard in. I want actually both of them. Why? Because we already have all of the others. We don't have enough honey. So I'm going to try to get as much honey as possible ASAP and get at least one cake going for our first breeding session. So I'm just gonna like throw the fox park in, at least like do a bit of work until I'm missing and I think uh, we can now go for the bushy fight. Ah, great. Just as I was about to leave, I have a raid going. So I think that this is the first one that managed to get past the bridge, like everybody spawned below and eventually gave up. And I'm also surprised that nobody in the base reacts to them at all for some reason. Not sure if this is intended, I'm pretty sure it's not, but nobody attacks at all. And I think it has to do with the fact that I set them to farm mode only. So maybe that have been a mistake. But yeah, they are actually pretty easy. No damage done, at least from what I'm able to tell. Only a bit of damage to me, but uh, that's not really an issue. This was actually much tamer than I expected. Now for the Bushy fight, I had to push a couple more levels to level 24 so that I can at least match him and not have too much of a difference because the damage was getting really overwhelming. However, I continued using some water-based creatures to counter it and gain the bonus damage. I also used those, of course, bonuses from the food to help me a bit. And of course, the three-shot arrow. And one of my best damage dealers was, in fact, Full Hark. Especially with this attack, it was absolutely destroying him, at least in the first part of the fight. Another thing with the Bushy fight, you have to be especially careful at his um, flash sword attack. So the way to dodge it, because there's a momentary pause that kind of tricks you, is to just pay attention to when his sword flashes. There's a big flash of light, you cannot miss it. So when you see that happening, either immediately dodge because the attack is about to land, or immediately retrieve your pal because it's about to get hit. And from this point on, yeah, easy with the chillet, and even more so, the dinosaur again make, made quick work of him, like completely destroyed, but full arc was definitely my, my top tier damage. In this case, catching him, and it went easier than I expected. I did not even have to use a Gigasphere. 
So now the only thing remaining is to go ahead and just get them in the base for some lovemaking. Yeah, we do have uh, to have that kid right now. We have the pen king. We have the bushy. Now, quick pause right here because you might have noticed this, but I did not at the time. And I was just checking the inventory and stumbled upon a legendary crossbow schematic, which completely blew me away. So I stood there for a bit, reviewed the footage, and only later I realized that it was the Bushi fight that actually dropped it for me on the very first kill. This literally never happened, I never got this lucky in the game before, and of course since then I never got a good schematic out of none of the other bosses anyway, but I was completely blown away that I actually got this on the first try. So now that we have the Panking and this guy in the breathing pan, we just have to wait, we're gonna get the Anubis in a bit, but... Somehow I do want to check this legendary thing that I just got, so I think that this is the luckiest playthrough I ever had so far in Pal World. This is probably going to help us so much. So yeah, we can actually craft the legendary crossbow at level 24. I, I thought that you would need to be at least level like 45 for these to drop, but no, it seems that they can just randomly drop at any point. So this is insane because I also only need a few more nails. So yeah, this is going to be absolutely crazy. So hold up. I gotta craft some of these nails right away. Gotta, gotta have somebody craft them for me. I think that this might just completely trivialize the game for us. Right, so uh, yeah, I think this tansy takes a little bit too long. But um, it's finally done and holy smokes, I can actually craft this. There's no way, dude. I'm just gonna throw this guy. I, dude, why can't they work faster? I want to get that gun already. So I'm just gonna like wait for a little bit and focus a bit on the Anubis and maybe get both of them at the same time. Scratch that, it's already done. So we have two that are ready. Well, one, but I need the cake and I'm gonna grab it. We do have to place the cake for this to resume and basically end. So that's actually two Anubises right there. Now, I did turn off the timer just because it wasn't feasible for the playthrough. However, I am hoping for a uh, proper one. And okay, it's not bad. At least not negative stats. And the second one doesn't show. Maybe the same. Oh, okay. So muscle head and burly body. That's not too bad considering its parents. So immediately that's going to be my main. I, I think that this playthrough absolutely started with a bang. We just got an amazing Anubis. It's not perfect, but of course, at this point, it's going to completely blow everything away. And we do have a second Anubis that we can place in the base and have like the transportation, but especially the mining going is going to complete projects for us much faster. So goodbye Tanzis, no longer needed. And the best part about this is that now, until we get the Phalaris, we can use the Bushi as our cake maker. Plus, he's also pretty good at chopping down trees. He's actually going to be the best at chopping down trees until you get the higher level variants out there. So, uh, yeah, until you get like Mosanda and others, or well, actually the Wumpo, they are the best. You can definitely use that. So, I'm also going to use my Anubis now to craft that uh, crossbow. I really thought it would be done by now, but obviously it, uh, it wasn't the case. Nothing to breed anymore. The farm is going on pretty nicely. We do have a bunch of resources. So I'm just gonna like go and push through it. Maybe get a statue going. I think that uh, we do need this for the base. Gain another level and maybe even like push for the next base right after this. I think it's done. I think we should be able to get it. So yes, absolutely. 490 damage. Holy smokes, that's like 10 times higher than anything that I have at this point. Does it even work like that? Like, can I do 490 damage on anything? Because that means a whole bunch of stuff will no longer be capturable for me. I think it's going to still scale with the level or whatnot. So yeah, let's try it. 250. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a huge difference from the like 30 damage I was doing previously. At least I'm not one-shotting things. That's... At least a reassurance. I can still capture these creatures. Well, at least not having to shoot dozens of these arrows to take somebody down. Now, I am surprised that the balance in this game is so good. Because I'm uh, shooting at different creatures. And depending on the creature, they uh, take less damage than before. So, it depends on the level difference plus on the type of creature. That's actually pretty good balance right there. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, got a bit distracted over there. But the next thing I wanted to do was to breed a Phalaris. So luckily, we can just use Anubis and Van Worm, which we already got. 
and get a Falaris super early. Now, he's not going to be rideable until level 38. However, he's going to be one of the best at kindling until we get your Muntide Ignis. And he also has quite a few levels into transporting, plus that level 3 into kindling. So he's going to be by far the best option for the cakes and for the smelting. So now that he's done, we can pretty much go ahead, hatch that egg, and it should be... Okay, it's pretty decent. Not like the best, but it's not like the parents were any great either. So this is just going to sit in our base until we can probably use it at 38, or maybe we can eventually condense this guy into the main one. It doesn't matter that uh, level 3 into kindling will help a ton. And he's going to be the first in line to always do the kindling on anything. He's going to be of such tremendous help in like the next 10 to 15 levels. Now, for the next few in-game days, what I've done is essentially pushed for even more levels. There are three things you can do in your downtime to get a level up fast. One is that 10 out of 10 XP bonus for all the low-level pals. Then you will want to farm the alpha bosses around the map on repeat, especially all the way up to your own level. And the third, try to complete as many dungeons as possible, also up to your level, as they have some alpha bosses at the end, which give you like three times the amount of XP that normal creatures give you. Plus, in this way, you might get some good specimens with some nice passives over there to further use in breeding. That's why you will definitely want to do this on repeat. Now, from this point on, the only thing we need is a very good mount. The problem is that between level 25 to level 38, most of the best mounts are concentrated in the final level. So between 33 to 38. Quite literally, you get a better mount almost every other level, so you get Beacon, then Ragnarok, Shadow Beak, and finally Phalaris in the span of just 5 levels. And it's not worth it to constantly upgrade because of the amount of resources that you spend. Either go with the one in the middle, which in this case would be Ragnarok, or just wait for 38 and go for Phalaris, which would be the best of the four. But between 26 and 33, your options are kind of limited. You can stick with Van Worm, which is super, well, slow, and you will need a ton of other Van Worms to eventually craft a proper one. Or you can go for Fanglope. Now, Fanglope is, in my opinion, by far the best option here for two main reasons. Well, one of them is because he's extremely fast and has one of the best double jumps, if not the best, in the entire game. But most important, second of all, is because it's very easy to get a ton of fanglopes and eventually breed a ton of them. You only need one panking and one lift monk. Both very early options. So let me show you what I did to craft this absolute beast. Took me a few hours, but I got it with three of the four most important stats. The only one I'm missing is legend. So let me show you the full lineage of this creature because it was pretty intense, but that's because my runner, Swift and Lucky were pretty fragmented in different types of pal breeds. So for the first one, I wanted to transfer the Swift and the runner on one creature and then use it to eventually get to Fanglope. So I combined a Spark it and a one of these Jolt Hogs that had it and eventually got a Who Crates that got both that Swift as well as the runner. Now, from this point on, I combined that with a Lucky Defunt, which was a mistake. I forgot that it's not Lucky that gives you extra move speed, it's a Legend, but it's still, I combined it with it, and this resulted in a Lift Monk that had both of those. So I combined another set of Lift Monks to get all three with the Lucky Runner and Swift, and finally added a Pen King in the mix with the Lift Monk, which eventually gave me this well, Fanglope. It's absolutely crazy how fast it is. Plus, you can use its Cloud Thing run ability to gain even more speed. To the point that this is going to just uh, completely outshine anything at this stage until maybe you reach um, some of the other flying creatures. But trust me, you're not going to need a flying creature with this thing. This just double jumps over anything. It doesn't have any issues. And if you just condense some of the other useless Fanglopes you've got, you can uh, get like 10% increase in its stamina, I believe, or double its stamina and 10% into jump rate. I kind of forgot the internal uh, calculations for each individual condensation, but it's going to give you a hefty boost over there for all the movement that you're going to be doing. Also, here's another quick tip that I use to move around the map and unlock more points of interest to reach the destinations much easier. First of all, just place all of the items in crates so that you don't lose them in the next stage. And what you're going to want to do is to essentially commit seppuku. I'm not kidding, this is going to let you essentially 
pick these other random spots on the map which only become visible once you die but they don't have a corresponding um, travel point however they will be close to a travel point which is a very easy way to essentially discover parts of the map and reach places you normally need a long time to reach so going to the northwest part of the map or northeast or even like southeast or west especially this is going to help a ton to uncover these specific points and when you want to travel to them maybe to open up a base or just get a creature you can totally do so because now you just unlocked a fast travel point right next to that death location so this was what i did for the next stage and this is also what i then used to more easily reach the desert location from this point on we needed the twilight dunes for yeah you guessed it coal now i could have gone up north very close to the control point i already had however i kind of got bored of that area and just wanted something in the desert that's basically it and there are about like eight or so coal spots in this location so basically i set up a base and eventually got it going with a bunch of creatures so now what i did is um, i wanted to build outline of a castle which is what um, essentially made me build this big structure but for now inside i just build a sweatshop not even kidding bunch of beds eventually a bunch of those conveyor belts for all of these uh, mobs to just work day and night for me and get my stuff going that's basically it you can also put a bunch of these protective walls and the good thing about this is that you don't need to encircle the base because the second half of the base is suspended on a cliff so anything that attacks you will stay there at the bottom they will not jump in unless they break the walls but they don't because the ai is dumb so from this point on i just set up the base nice and steady i put a bunch of these um, berry farms and wheat plantations Plus, I also set up two of these ranches so that I can give all the Vixies all the location that they need and then keep the other ranch at the other base to craft the cakes. So they will drop a ton of those arrows and a ton of those spell spheres. Plus, I also placed another one for those malpacas and get a ton of wool in the process. Until we get the Sibilix, yeah, this is going to be the best option. They drop two at a time and we can then funnel it into the high level cloth that eventually will be needed for the better beds and all the other gear and things that you will craft. But for now, the base actually looks pretty respectable. Again, sweat shop look alikey, but uh, I don't really care. We have a proper one and it does mine a ton of resources. Now there are a few more things I recommend from this point on. By this time you should reach like level 30 if you've done everything I told you. Also try to get a Gale Claw and even a Hells of Fear. Hells of Fear is also great in bases because they will exclusively handle carrying. They don't do anything else but transportation and they have a rank 3 into all of that. So that's why I recommend finding them up north around this region during night time. You will constantly see them around. And special about that area is that also Gale Claws spawn during the day, but also during the night. So you can also get Gale Claw as a glider. And having that Gale Claw so early at about level 26 to 28 will help a ton as you try to clear dungeons really fast and gain XP from them as fast as possible. In dungeons, you don't really want to spend too much time except going for the final alpha boss as that's going to give you the best resources and the best XP. Everything else, it's just if you want it, if you find any other pals or if you want to unlock other chests. But yeah, pretty much the main attraction is going to be the boss and the final two treasure chests. And right now, this is how my bases look like, especially the main one. Now, I did find a very good one with a nice oasis and in a very good spot to give me both the iron ore as well as the coal, but I do want to keep that secret for a bit longer. So again, let me know down below if you want to see the last final bit of this playthrough. I can definitely continue it for you if you want and definitely still include like all the tips and tricks to make it as optimal as possible. But this is pretty much it with the video. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.